Thank you. Well, so then the current study. Uh, as you can see here, here is our inclusion ex and exclusion criteria. They are quite complex and there is a lot of those. Because we work at the um, Institute of Occupational Health, we are pretty much concentrated at the occupational uh, functioning and work ability. And that's the first one, and that's uh, our main goal to booster our uh, patients' uh, work ability. And that's also the inclusion criteria. We are uh, trying to catch those patients that uh, uh, are still working, but their work ability is like lowering. And uh, the symptoms or the subjects have several kind of symptoms uh, with respiratory but also some other organ system symptoms. Uh, and uh, no test uh, can explain all the symptoms. They, mi they might have an asthma, yes, but they might have something else like uh, pains, uh, rash, uh, symptoms that cannot be fully explained by the medical test and examinations, and they are our targets. Also, they they are still working, uh, and they have to change uh, workplaces. They they might there might be repairs at the workplaces or even a change at the workplace. But the symptoms continue, even though uh, exclusion. Um, and if there is some um, explaining factors, explaining if the asthma explains all the symptoms, of course, then we, we don't treat or take those patients to our research. But we are looking like of the symptoms that are not fully explained and are um, uh, complex uh, and basically there is uh, no, no reasons why the patients uh, are c coming for the uh, occupational health care. So, yeah, our challenge, lots of complex uh, criteria, and then the protocol. Um, our, our goal is to get uh, 80 patients with these criteria, uh, and from here at the baseline, we are doing, doing the medical examinations uh, for all of them, uh, trying to find out if there is something that might explain, but then if, if there isn't, they, then we take them in. Uh, we are comparing three different uh, treatments, and then of course the treatment as usual. Uh, all the patients stay at uh, their own uh, occupational health care and that's the treatment as usual as well so the control group the above and then three different treatments uh, and we are following them uh, 12 months one year uh, from the beginning of, our, of this research our interventions uh, from the bottom of the uh, list, it's the treatment as usual. Uh, might be some uh, some treatment, but it's the normal way ho how we handle these patients in Finland. If they have something uh, symptoms, we uh, uh, they are treated as like normal in the healthcare. But then, if we go up, uh, these are like uh, more common and I at at the highest one, the cognitive behavioral therapy is the individual, uh, mo the longest, most of more sessions, and, uh, and more deeper, deeper yes, intervention. Uh, this, this is more based like on our experiences of the pilot study, the, the information what we have of this, uh, problems about indoor air sim symptoms and the inter indoor air problems and it is more common <laughs> only one session it's not uh, <coughs> made for the individuals it, it's it's like uh, based on scientific knowledge and then the group therapy uh, this is um, 
uh, at the first time uh, there it's made by the Lars Jöran Öst. I don't know if you, you might heard about him. He's a Swedish professor here. And now <coughs> we are trying or, or testing it, comparing it with the others. And it it's seven sessions with uh, with this uh, r relaxation techniques, and then the cognitive behavioral th therapy. Ten sessions with individual point of view. Wh how you can manage with your uh, symptoms? What can you do for your symptoms? Do you have some personal coping strategies? Can you ch ch change them, uh, and so on? Yes, so there might be that the hidden hypothesis here is that the the, uh, the cognitive behavioral therapy, because it's individual, it's, uh, there is more tools for the patients uh, to work with their own, own symptoms that might be the most effective one, but it's just, just my, uh, of course, I'm a psychologist, so I think it might be the most effective one, but hard to say. Oh. And yes, um, our outcomes and measures, we work at the Finnish Institute of Occupational Health, so the work capacity is the, m our primary goal, how to uh, improve it. Also, uh, health-related quality of life, uh, more wider function in social, psychological and physical functioning, this sh second well-being factor. Then we also are gathering information about the psychological factors that are affecting patients' response to treatment. And the ther therapeutic alliance is one of those. It's not there, but we are searching about the alliance. What, what's the, uh, how the alliance, therapeutic alliance, affects to these uh, treatments and the uh, results that we have. And of course, symptoms, symptomology. Yep. And the last one, the challenges. Well, there is lots of those. Uh, the patient compliance. Here is um, the f first challenge. Um, Effort. This, for example, this uh, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. It's uh, once a week, and then you have to practice in between those sessions. How to motivate our patients to do something with their own time? It's not like that. They have to be active. They have to uh, train themselves. Also, we have to uh, motivate them, and we have to find the. Fa uh, ways to wor work with them. Uh, th this is like, a, uh, th also the therapists are learning here, so uh, we, we are sh searching the compliance, also the way of the, what can the therapist do some way or another to help patients to motivate. Um, we were talking about this public, public information. I, I, I tried to say it's that there is competing medical uh, <laughs> opinions, but he, he wanted to change it to expert related opinions. But uh, yes, uh, in, at the, this time in Finland, there is um, at the public media lots of opinions that is it the experts, uh, experts uh, or the doc toxicologists' explanations or uh, how to uh, how to uh, what, what the ex explanations are there are strong opinions against each others and we are like somewhere in between that how 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 to work with those uh, opinions and with the patients and not to uh, intervene with the conversation going on and then the dose response accuracy. I mean, they, we have uh, one of our treatments is the only psycho psychoeducation one session. Uh, is it enough? Do we have enough information uh, or the right information to give for the patients? Uh, and is it even a 10-session treatment enough with, with them? 
or is it too much? Is it even too much? The patients have to also be an active to be motivated with working with us. It might be too much. They they m might get bored and drop out from our <laughs> study I that's continuing one year. So that's one of our challenges. But please, um, this uh, uh, pac patient requirement started two weeks ago. This is where we are at the very beginning. So now I would really li very much like to hear some questions or comments about this. What does this look like for you? This is actually the first time that we are anywhere to talking about this. <laughs> you are the first audience for us. So comments or questions? Some of them show <coughs> positive, uh, encouraging results. But this is, is I think, one of the very few serious uh, steps to do something more than just a simple case study or a pilot study. So keep on with the good work. Yeah, thank you. This is really, we are trying to wider the toolbox for the healthcare specialists and for the patients to work with this problem. So, yeah. That when you speak with a specialist in occupational medicine, they say that these kind of patients they are very common, very very common, very much patients. So so really needed some tools and, and doctors think that or or, or the, the personnel at the healthcare centers they really need something. So let's see, let's hope. 